Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic graph theory. Today I would like to talk about one of my favorite theorems ever, um, and it's related to spectrum of graphs. Uh, so AD is it, we'll see what that means. Um, so we want to classify graphs as a small spectrum, and we'll see what that means in a second. So graph, remember graph spectrum, that gives us essentially account for the number of paths, and I'm kind of ignore the technicalities here, I'm gonna just say it gives us an, a way to count paths. So essentially I'm asking for, can we classify graphs which have very few paths? That sounds kind of doable, um, maybe not, we'll see, but it's kind of a very mystical thing that happens, but there will be a break. I will see where the break will happen. And kind of before the break, everything is kind of nice. And after the break, kind of hell breaks loose, uh, which is, so I like it so much. It's kind of very, very strange kind of gap somewhere between doable and just infinitely hard. Um, but anyway, so here is a picture which we had before, kind of the spectrum of small graphs. And I'm interested in the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue. So I'm not really interested in the non-connected ones. I'm a little bit boring. But here, for example, one, two, square root of two, one, and so on. Uh, always the one to the left here. Uh, those values are given here, and they're not so super important to remember. But kind of, we want to classify graphs with a very small Perron Frobenius eigenvalue, and remember that the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue um, is uh, certainly this should be value, not vector. So the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue is kind of the biggest eigenvalue. And it's kind of small spectrum means since everything is smaller than the Perron Frobenius eigenvalue, I would like to say small spectrum means the Perron Frobenius eigenvector is small. And since its power, as I said before, essentially counts the number of graphs up to some stupidities, essentially counts the number of graphs, this is like of counting uh, graphs with very few paths. The more edges you have, you would expect more, more paths. So we're kind of counting things with quite a few edges, um, not necessarily few vertices, kind of a very good mixture between few edges and few vertices, because I'm, as I said, I'm not really interested in the non-connected ones. Kind of a very nice mixture um, between having kind of a minimal possible number of edges and somehow minimal possible number of paths. And it's not clear from the outset whether this should be possible to even classify those graphs. Um, it's a bit hard to tell, right? So could it could be possible, could be not possible. Uh, so let's just have a look. Um, so it's actually really easy to see, and here's my ADE. So ADE is just referring to very simple graphs, if you want. So the type A graph is just a line. This is what I called the past graph before. Um, let me just call it type A. And this is kind of historically the correct name, if you want, or depending where you come from, it is the historically correct name. And then there's a type D graph, which is a line with a little fish tail. And that's it. It's essentially a line, just a little fish tail. And then there are, th so all, all of these are infinite families, so they can have arbitrary many vertices. Um, E6, E7, and E8 only appear for six vertices, seven vertices, and eight vertices. And they're kind of, um, so mathematicians like those a lot. So this is a kind of a cool, type of classification, because you have two infinite families, those two, and then kind of random type of examples. And uh, they're not really random, but they're kind of, it's not quite clear where they come from. And usually that says that something interesting is going on, and they appear in quite uh, a kind of, kind of variety of different mass questions. Um, the point here is it's quite easy to compute, and I did that. Well, I, I didn't really compute it. I just asked the list, of course. But anyway, I showed you the eigenvalues of this guy here. Um, there was this two, the very important one, cosine, uh, well, if I pi over uh, n plus one, n is the number of vertices, and i goes from uh, one to n. Uh, so that's the num that's these are the eigenvalues, and you can easily check that this will never be bigger than two. So that's exactly the bound here. Everything else, so all the others have very similar looking eigenvalues, and in particular, the biggest one is always smaller than two. Okay, so these funny cosine numbers one of the, look completely silly, completely random, but they appear somehow everywhere. 
Oh, very strange call sign numbers. Anyway, so stay below two. And is the list complete? Well, let me spoil the story already. The list is complete. So the eigenvalues that are smaller than two, um, so the Peron Fabinius one, is just this list, and it's not so bad. It's kind of what you would expect. We want to count graphs with very few paths. Um, clearly, the line has very few paths. And then you modify the line a little bit, like putting in these little uh, things here. And that's it. Um, a bit surprising that that's it. So you can't modify the line in any other way. So we'll always have a bigger number of paths. Oh, fun result. Um, turns out that the, these ADE graphs kind of appear everywhere in mathematics, like they pop out and, oh, you have some problem. And the solution is it's an ADE graph problem. Very strange. Uh, really, really great. So really, really great. So can, try to remember those graphs. Very simple. Um, there are three exceptions. Otherwise, it's a line, and the line with a little fishtail uh, at the end. All right, you can still solve the question for eigenvalues smaller or equal to two. And the only case that is missing is if the Pierre and Fabinius eigenvalue is two. Right before it was strictly smaller. So on the last page, it was strictly smaller, and now we're going to equal two. And it turns out that these are the affine AGE diagrams, which are just displayed here. And I also displayed, oh, I stole this picture. This picture displays also the Perron Fabinius eigenvector. So for the circle here, for example, as uh, this is really just a circle with uh, n vertices, you will just see the eigenvector is one, 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 one. The very simple one here is very simple as well. So affine type A is a circle. And the next is, has a few map paths. Well, the number of paths here will grow like two to the n, then uh, the line, but not much more. And here's a double fish tail. Here's a fish tail, and here's a fish tail. Like the double fish tail, uh, affine type D has a few more paths than the one fish tail, which is kind of absolutely believable. And you can make this very precise because the growth rate of the number of paths here, because PF is e equal to two, is always like two to the n. So these guys are really special. And there you have the three exceptions. Okay, fine. These guys are really special because the number of paths essentially grows like two to the n. Um, and two to the end is a really, really nice sequence. Guess what? Uh, so these are kind of very nice. And is this list, you check that by hand again, it's not really hard to write down the eigenvalues of those graphs. And the question is, is the list complete? So can't you modify here this little thing by adding another vertex or something? I know you can't. So the list, so you can't, the list is complete, which is kind of the same. It's really, really an amazing statement. I just wrote down the eigenvalues down here again. So here are our cosine numbers, uh, the magical numbers cosine that you will see all over the place. Roots of Chebyshev polynomials, for example. Anyway, for any connected graph, the legal, leading eigenvalue is smaller than two, so strictly, if and only if it's ADE type, and it's equal to two if and only if it's affine ADE type. And this is kind of um, really this, this thing where you have kind of as few paths as possible. Like, in a connected graph, you will always have a lot of paths and the growth of two to the n is kind of the, the minimal uh, possible in some sense anyway. And there's a similar statement for directed graphs. But this magic a boundary number here is two. So either smaller than two or equal to two. So the interval uh, between zero and two for the Peron Fabinius eigenvalue is, has a really nice kind of classification of graphs. And they have really strange quantized eigenvalues. So you never see anything else than those funny cosine numbers. Because as you can see here, they are all cosine numbers, just variations of the same cosine number. It's kind of a very strange result. So graphs with small spectrum, you can classify them nicely. And also they have really kind of very discrete eigenvalues, which is kind of a fun, it's an absolutely fun result. A beautiful. Um, anyway, so and then it turns out, well, okay, the obvious question like any mathematician would ask is, what if we go a little bit beyond two? And it turns out that essentially hell breaks loose. So you might ask, what about uh, something like plus epsilon for small enough epsilon, right? Two plus epsilon. And the classification gets really complicated. So what I should have said before is that I just showed you the, the result, the theorem, and you can actually go now and prove it yourself. It's not so difficult. The other results where you have a plus epsilon, there are still some classifications. But first of all, the classification get pretty wild pretty fast. 
And also it's not as easy anymore uh, to prove anything here. So kind of the, the last one, which has a reasonably nice statement and not like a zoo of different graphs is uh, this one here, which just goes to 2.058, not much more. <laughs> but anyway, so if you want to go beyond two, it gets really, really difficult. And it's not much, uh, to, to, the last classification is around two point something. So it's, it's not much bigger than the one I showed you here. So it gets really difficult. The number of graphs just explodes tremendously and it, it's, it's devilishly complicated. Anyway, so I showed you kind of a fun result here. So there were two fun results. So first of all, if you are into graphs with few paths, you can classify that somehow up to this bound boundary of uh, two to the end as a gross. So two is exactly the cutoff. Afterwards, it, there are known results. I shouldn't say there are no results. There are known results, but they are much more difficult. But anyway, up to this point two, you have a beautiful classification of well lines and fishtails. Let me just say it this way, and a few exceptions, <laughs> lines and fishtails. And not just that you have this beautiful classification, but also the eigenvalues of a very, very specific form. It's not like anything can occur. No, but the only thing that ever occurs are those funny cosine numbers. Turns out that the funny cosine numbers uh, are very, very special numbers that they turn up somehow everywhere in mathematics. Anyway, I hope you like those cosine numbers. We will definitely see them again eventually. Uh, anyway, I also hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.